it's difficult being a woman in a men's prison. I have faced rape, being assaulted, discrimination. Being referred as he can be sometimes degrading. Sometimes you have low self-esteem because they look at you if you wear makeup and they want to talk crazy behind your back or to your face and you can't do nothing about it. There's a lot of these guys that don't understand transgender living and we just don't like hear from the inmates, we hear from the staff as well. I've been incarcerated now for 14 and a half years. Three years. 23 and a half years. I've been incarcerated for 30 years now and I prefer to be in a woman's prison because I look at myself as a transgender woman and I should be treated as a woman. It was a crime spree. I was robbing women for, for their accessories, their purses, their makeup, because I was too afraid to go into the stores and buy my own things because of the backlash on the streets. At the California Institution for Men in Chino, where minimum security prisoners sleep on bunk beds in large shared spaces and spend their days in the communal yard, there are 78 female transgender prisoners living among more than 3,500 men. My first night in prison, it started when I got in the police car. I was terrified. So I get to the county jail and I get undressed and they was like, when I take off my shirt, they're like, okay, is this individual a man or is a female? So they, one of the things that they wanted to ask the question, I could see it in their in they face because I had breasts at that point. So I told them, I said, I was born male but at night I identify as female. So it was like, okay, we got you in the right spot. For many of these trans incarcerated people, they'd rather be housed with the gender they identify with. Something prisons are required by the Federal Prison Rape Elimination Act to consider on a case-by-case -case basis. I prefer to be housed with my identity, but being here with the other guys, you have to fit in to where you can fit in, otherwise they're going to cast you out. Being a transgender woman at this facility, it's a lot harder because there's no privacy. Zero privacy in the showers, the housing unit itself is wide open. The bunk spaces, you know, getting dressed, putting lotion on, just stuff like that is very, like, it's hard. But for many trans women serving time with men, sexual violence is the real fear. According to the Justice Department, 35% of incarcerated trans people report being sexually assaulted, either by other prisoners or prison staff. LGBTQ advocates believe the real numbers may actually be far higher, but prisoners fear retaliation for reporting attacks. I was raped and attempted to be raped in 2015 by an individual I was in a cell with hit me. And when he hit me, he hit me so hard where I flew into the door. He came as a start beating me and take, just ripping my clothes off me. The CO apparently heard me falling up against the door and come running up the stairs. I filed a complaint about it and they come back now unsubstantiated because of the fact that he didn't penetrate me. Without no evidence, it didn't happen. It didn't exist. California's Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation declined to comment on Michelle's allegations. Federal law requires states to ask transgender prisoners every six months whether they feel safe and to take that into account when deciding where to house them. But according to an NBC News investigation, of the 4,890 incarcerated trans people currently being tracked nationally, only 15 are housed according to their lived gender. Six states, which account for nearly 40% of the total incarcerated transgender population, cited privacy concerns and declined to provide housing data. Five states failed to provide any information at all. At Chino, most of the 10 transgender women NBC News spoke to said they wanted to be moved to a female prison, but they've either been denied or not been asked about their safety concerns. California's Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation says it can't discuss individual cases due to privacy concerns. It does say California houses some trans people according to their lived gender, 
but declined to provide details. Amy Miller oversees the placement of women in California's prisons. We actually have a process where we talk to our transgender population. We interview them twice a year to talk about their safety in their housing and their placement and whether or not they are looking for changes or believe that they need to have uh, accommodations because of their status as being transgender or for any other reason. Can I say for sure what the extent of that interview was, how it was conducted? Maybe, maybe not. No, I get interviewed once a year. About where you would feel safe with? No. It's my annual review and they say do you would do it in absentia. The question about my safety in a woman or a men's facility has never been asked. Not once. When I ask to go to a women's prison because I am a woman. We're not coming over there with no objectives. We're coming over there to be safe. They're women, we're women. We just want to be safe and have more opportunities to be who we are.